Lord, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You are awesome, Lord. You reign supreme. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word, Lord. Oh, your word, Lord, which will light up our pathway, Lord. Your word, God, which is the seed, oh God, that will grow us and nourish us, oh God, that will mature us, Lord. Oh, we give you glory, Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. Good evening and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We give him honor this evening. We worship him this evening. We welcome you while we are waiting for some more people to come on. I welcome you, Sister Abby. God bless you. I would like you all to listen to this whole message. This is part two of Influence. The former message that I made, the one before this, God was giving me some more info and I took a little while because I wanted more info. I wanted more revelation. Amen. So we bless the Lord this evening. We worship him. God gave me this powerful revelation after being attacked. Amen. This is how the devil operates and I want to educate you. When things are not going right, when things are going wrong, when you reach a deadlock in your life and you may be wondering why, I want to let you know why this evening. We want to expose the devil this evening. He wants to expose us, but we pray that when the Lord searches us, that he will find nothing, that the devil will not be able to find anything to accuse us of. That we would be spotless, amen. We would be um, guiltless this evening. Hallelujah. So this is part two of influence. And I felt that I needed to continue that message. Amen. So my message is influence. And I want to show you how Satan sets up his kingdom in the workplace through one person. How he sets up his kingdom in the neighborhood through one person. How he sets up his kingdom in your family through one person. Amen. So I just want to let you know this evening. He is setting up people that Satan is setting up his people. Amen. To detour you from your destiny. So we know that spirits align themselves with the same kind of spirits. They monitor you and they look for when the door is opening. Amen. Satan has a government. I want to prove it from the scripture this evening. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this evening. Satan sets up people to influence you, to detour you from your destiny with enticing words. What was Satan thinking when he thought he could overthrow the one who made him? What was Satan thinking when he thought that God would bow to him? What was he thinking? What went into his mind? Amen. So it is very important that you, the leader that you are assigned to is following God according to 
to the word of God according to the Bible. Amen. So when you see a number of people coming up against you, you know Satan is working through those people. You know that Satan has set up his government in those people to work against you. Let me tell you, Satan wants to shut you down. Satan wants to shut you up. As a matter of fact, Satan wants to kill you. Let me let you know. Yeah, when he sends sickness and disease in your body and you feel that today I cannot get up, my bones is hurting, my heart is hurting, everything is going wrong. This is how Satan operates. And I want to let remind you here. I want to go, let's go. If you have your Bibles, take out your Bibles. Let's study the word together this evening. Let's study what happened to Satan and why it happened to him. And why he is here trying to build his government. Because Satan tried to build a government to overthrow God. To build his government and he failed. So he wants to build his government here. His kingdom on the earth through human beings. And people give Satan legal rights to build governments through them. Because of sin. Because if you need some examples... If you have darkness in your life, if you have envy and jealousy and malice and pride, Satan loves to work with people who are proud and they have pride and they think they are better than other people because he was so beautiful. His beauty made him proud. Right? So, I hope that I am helping you and enlightening you this evening because, as I said, I welcome Sister Christine, every one of you this evening, welcome you to part two of influence. Amen. God created us to influence. That is what the devil was doing. He was influencing some of the angels who was assigned to him to overthrow God. Amen. He had a coup against God. The one who made him. Satan did not want to do what God created him to do he wanted to control satan likes to control and that is that is a fruit this is one fruit of someone who is under demonic influence and the people who are under them are under demonic influence because they like to control satan always wanted to control he didn't want god to control him so let us read listen um isaiah Chapter 14, verses 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He wanted to sit in God's seat. Do you know anyone like that, that they want to take your place and they want to sit in your seat? Well, that is the devil building his government and his kingdom through them. And they will begin to influence other people in the workplace, in the church, in the neighborhood. Amen. This is what Satan does and I'm reading it. Satan wants to control. So... When we see Satan controlling someone's life, it's because they are given him, they are given him the rights to control their life. Because there is a certain way that the Almighty God said to live and to operate how we have to be. So we don't want Satan to come in through any door, any door. Amen. Satan thought he was popular. You know, people like to be popular. They want to be popular. So, he said here, this is what Satan said in his mind, eh, in his heart, that he wants to sit upon the mount of the congregation. At that time, he wanted to sit in God's place. Now, he wants to sit in the church through the pastor, the man, the woman of God, and the leaders to control, to contaminate, because um, the Bible said a little leaven, leaven the lump. Amen. So this is what, when we see things going wrong in our workplace, in our neighborhood, in the body of Christ, wherever we at, we know that there is demonic activities and demonic operations there, that Satan is building his kingdom. And we, 
God said he has given us dominion and authority to pull it down. Amen. And this is what I've been trying. This is what I've been doing warfare. This is warfare. You begin to pull down the kingdom of God. Um, the, sorry, the kingdom of the devil through whomever you are being attacked. Now, I, I was being attacked. And this is one person God showed me that Satan was trying to build his government and his kingdom there. And to control. Amen. So I just want to let you know. So we are, we, I'm showing you how you have to. If there is one person controlling a lot of people. You know that is the devil operating there. And he built his kingdom there and his government to control, to manipulate, to dominate. Amen. Because he wants to destroy. He wants to mash up. He wants to shut down. He wants to divide families. He wants to separate marriages. Right? This is Satan's goal on the earth because he came, became wicked. Satan became wicked. And, and we see that when we see somebody being wicked is because they are being controlled by the enemy by satan and his demons so let us read i'm showing you here and this is the revelation the lord gave me even though it was for that time for thou hast said in thine heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god how dare satan think this in his mind I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He wants to sit in your home, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your health. Right? So it says, 14 say, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Yet God, while Satan was conspiring with his angels or whoever are counseling, God was already planning for him. God was already planning for Satan. He said he had a plan for Satan. Satan didn't want the beautiful plan that God had for him. He to be the most beautiful angel. He didn't want that. He wanted to be wicked. He wanted to control God. Yet thou shalt be brought down, this is God saying, to hell, to the sides of the pit. So God went and prepared a place for Satan and his accomplices. And whomever does not repent and recognize that Satan is using them and building his government through them, they will also reign with Satan in, that, in hell, in that pit. Right? So there are consequences. We think because we cannot see God that he is not there. But God knew what Satan was doing. He knew what Satan was planning. And let us go over this evening to the book of Ezekiel. I want to give you some time to turn to the word of God. So the prophets tell us that Satan was an angel known as the morning star. Translated as Lucifer. Ezekiel 28.14 as an angel. We think we have some angels in our jobs, in our homes, in our churches. Huh? Lucifer walked on God's holy mountain and was anointed to serve God as a member of the guardian cherub. Lucifer was created to serve God. And we were created to serve God. Amen. That is our main mission to serve God. We were created to influence. Who has influence over you, church? Who is influencing you? Influencing you. You don't have to answer it right now, right? Hallelujah. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Said here. And I wanted to share some information with you because I myself wanted more information. Listen. The battle for planet earth begins with Ezekiel chapter 28. And Isaiah 14, there are two major biblical passages that reveals the entrance of sin in the universe. 
when Satan fell. Ezekiel 28 begins with a pronouncement of judgment upon the prince of Tyre. Who turns out to be a reference to Lucifer or Satan. Who is behind a human king. So when we see wickedness reigning in humans across the board. From the church to the home to the job to the neighborhood. We know who is behind it. Because this is what Ezekiel 28 was saying here. Right? It was saying that. Ezekiel 28 begins with a pronouncement of who is behind the human king. Who was behind the human king of Tyre? The word of the Lord came again saying unto me, Son of man, said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God. And we see here that the king of Tyre was saying this. And this is the same thing that Satan said and he wanted to do. So we see here that Satan was in this king of Tyre. And he was saying that because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as a heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Right? He thought he was wise. So let us read here in verses 15. Church, am I helping you this evening? Are you getting it? You were the anointed. I Listen. You were the anointed cherub who covers up the stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. And the day we get saved, we all holy and sanctified. Amen? We get holy and we get sanctified. And as time pass, and we neglect our relationship with God, and we start to get position on the job in the kingdom, in, in, um, in the kingdom, we start to go up and up and up. We forget God. We forget holiness and righteousness and right living. Now we want to sabotage and backstab people and slander people. Amen. Come on church. I am helping you. I am letting you know that you have dominion. You have power and authority to dismantle the devil's kingdom that he is building on your job through humans and your work through humans. In your home through humans. In your neighborhood through humans. Amen. You have dominion and you have power and authority. You do not go and take up a cutlass or a gun. Or any physical weapon. But you have authority. You have power. Amen. You have exousia authority and dunamis power. And you have the rima word. This is where my husband, I went through something very, very not nice. Amen. I was being attacked and being lied on. And my husband was saying, I was just looking for people to cover my back to help me get through this. And my husband said to me, he said, listen. He said, God don't want you to come out of this. He wants you to go through it. Right? I understand that. That every attack come, God wants me to go through. Yes, I thank God for the people who have strengthened me. Pastor Sherry, Auntie Minnie, whoever. My husband. But God was saying that he wants us to go through it. There is a lesson to be learned. Amen. So, you are the anointed cherub who covers, and I place you there. Babe, put on the AC, please. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst until unrighteousness was found in you. Verses 14 to 15, even though created beautiful and good, Satan, the top angel of God, fell into sin and took a third of the angels with him influence. Influence. How did Satan contaminate these angels? How did he influence these angels to start a war against God? To hatch a conspiracy? To hatch cockatrice eggs and spider's webs against the almighty God? 
who made him and created him and gave him an assignment and who made him more beautiful and more perfect than all the other angels. Influence is important. Let us search our lives. Is there demonic influence in our lives? Is the people we are under, under demonic influence? Are they influencing us to do bad things in the kingdom? Wicked things in the kingdom to come against people? To shut down the work? To shut down the work? And Satan loves to do that. Listen, the revelation flow. The reason why Satan said he wants to control. He wants to sit on the mount. He wants to sit as a man inside the man and woman of God. To control to shut down, to destroy, to detour, to avert, to abort people's purposes and destiny. He wants to shut down the work of the house of the Lord and he uses people. Amen? Amen? AC. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, Pastor, here, this is what it say here in, um, well, I want to read it over. Pastor is here and he's, you know, encouraging me. He's in agreement. Listen. This is what Satan was saying here, Pastor. I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne. Verses 13b say, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. This is where Satan wants to take his place. And the control. Positioning in himself. Right. So he's looking for people. He cannot do it on his own. He has to work through humans. Amen? So, he's looking for humans that he can work through. The devil is looking for humans that he can influence, that he can start building his kingdom and his government in them to control and to influence. You know why churches mash up? Let me let you know, church, I want to help you and I hope I'm helping you. I'm opening your eyes. Let me let you know. When Satan, the king of Tyre, God said that he wanted to be God. This is what the king, let me read it over to you and I welcome you. Sister Shariza, Sister Crystal, I'm sharing about influence. We were created to influence. Satan was created to influence the angels, to worship God, amen, to protect. And when, listen. He say here, I'm reading from Ezekiel 14, verses 13 B.C. I will sit also upon the mouth of the congregation in the sides of the north. Right? So let me let you know. Wherever you're working, if you're a good worker, a godly worker, a hard worker, you will find Satan setting up himself in one person to form a government. And then... That one person will influence the other person. So Satan form a whole government on your job now. I'm just using that as an example. Or in the church now. To detour what God is doing. To stop the work of God. To shut you down. To shut your mouth. To disable you. To cripple you that you would not be able to move on. Right? Now, when you begin to pull down the kingdom of Satan and his government... From that person and whomever, you have the authority, the authority, because I had to do it, and I am still doing it. I'm still saying, God, in the name of Jesus, I dismantle and I pull down the government that Satan is a building through that person to control them, to mash up relationships and families. Amen. Slander. Things I never heard before. Things I never heard about myself, people is slandering me. Because why? You say you're a man or woman or God and you're pulling down the kingdom. Because you think when you shut me down, right? You think when you shut down the work that I do in, you're shutting down me. But is the kingdom of God? Listen, when you go against, come up against a real man and woman of God, you are coming up against them and you coming up against the God inside of them. And we have to be careful. Church, we have to be careful about allowing people to influence us against men and women of God who are building the kingdom. Yeah, it has some Sambalas and Tobiah that will come. Amen. 
every time the work of the Lord had to be done, somebody would come to hinder the work of the Lord. But let me let you know, if you're smart enough, and you really start to pray and fast and quote the word and seek the word and seek God, it will be accomplished. You know, Satan could only stop you for a little while. He thinks he could shut you down, but you have the power, you have the authority. Amen? That's why we have each other. And we don't know, as man and woman of God, who to trust. Because we think, if we call Sister Charmaine, Sister Charmaine will begin to tell Sister Sister Jane and Sister Jane will tell, and that is how the kingdom of the devil built in a hey, revelation for you. Let me tell you how the kingdom of the devil is built in the house of the Lord, right? Now, Sister Sherman calls Sister Jane for backup. No. The devil has his people to back him up good. You know, the only people who don't have people to back them up is the people of God. Come on, am I preaching good? The, the people, the the Kingdom of darkness, people, the devil kingdom, had a people to back them up. And when God, people call for backup, that is she, that good for she, who is she? She again me nothing, she ain't doing nothing for me. I don't have to do nothing for you, sister, as God had to do it for you. If you want to use me, he will use me, whoever he have to use. Amen. Come on. Come on, church. So, um. Is any situation sounding familiar? Because it's happening to me and it has happened to me and because of experience, right? This is part two of influence. This is how the church, the house of the Lord, mashes up. When one person say they want to sit in the mouth of the congregation to control and who is sitting inside of them is the devil himself to mash up. This is what Satan said and I would like to read it over and over again. Verses 14 says, to t verses 14 to 10 B says, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. Church, my revelation is that Satan wants to sit inside the man and woman of God, inside the leaders, amen, inside the intercessors, inside the pastors, the evangelists. And one thing dawned on me that I want to bring to you this evening all this thing that we see prophets and people doing it is not in the bible where we go online and we ask people to sow seed that is not scriptural if you study the bible paul and timothy there was no account of these types of thing being done this type of thing that is being done through prophets and apostles, where they milk out the kingdom people like they milk in a cow, is from the devil. The devil influence, because the devil sitting in the seat. I want you to know, you will know a tree by its fruits. When you begin to see a man or a woman controlling a portion of the church, the work, the neighborhood, that is the devil sitting in them to do it. And in, now you as the one God has given you. Listen, you have the power and the anointing to change the atmosphere in your job, where you live, in your neighborhood, in your school. Come on, church. You have the power to do it. What are you doing with the dunamis power that God has empowered you with through the power of the Holy Ghost? And if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. So listen, if, uh, I want to read this out for you guys. Hallelujah. Let's worship a little bit. Come on, church. Don't give up on me. Don't cut me off this evening. Come on. There is no, no better time than to be in the presence of the Lord this evening. Amen. The presence of the Lord is the best where, where we are. This is where we need to be in the presence of the Lord. In your presence, there is peace, sweet peace. Come on, church. In your presence, there is peace, sweet peace. God bless you, brother Dinesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Welcome, welcome. And Isaiah 14 is the other major passage 
that teaches us about the fall of Satan. Verses 13 and 14 record Satan's famous declaration of rebellion when he said, But you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the recess in the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Listen, Satan said he wants to ascend above the clouds and clouds in the old testament always represents a glory of god you see satan wanted god's glory and god said no man will glory in his presence no man will get his glory no flesh satan wanted to be god he wanted to get god glory he wanted god to worship him instead he was going backward amen and i'm sure that satan knew why he was created. Amen. I'm sure he knew his assignment. I'm sure he knew what he was doing. Because clouds in the Old Testament represent the glory. And he said he wanted to get the glory. He wanted to ascend above the heights in the clouds to get the glory. So if you know people like that, they are under demonic influence. Satan is helping them and leading them. Amen. Come on, leave some comments. Yes, Brother Dinesh. God bless you on your business. We buy fish, Gulfview Link Road, and lobster. Oh, that lobster really tasted good. My daughter-in-law will send you the pic. Amen. We had a nice Father's Day lunch, and she made the um, lobster. Hallelujah. After Satan's fall into sin, he now how to expand his influence here we are talking about influence everybody say influence somebody will influence you if you're not influencing anybody and we are not seeing kingdom man and woman influencing people they get themselves involved in gossiping in lying and backbiting and fighting and talking about people the works of the flesh fighting for position i should be the worshiper i should be the deacon i should be the elder it's not about that church it's about influencing who can you influence it's about impacting people into the kingdom of god who are you working for who are you working for listen after Satan's fall into sin, he now sets out to expand his influence by tempting the newly created Adam and Eve to join his rebellion against God. So Satan formed himself into a snake and he got Eve to join in his rebellion and Eve got a husband to join in the rebellion. And none of them repented. So listen, not only a karamando shanda revelation flowing church, come on. Not did only Satan influence the angels, but he influenced Eve, the mother of all. And Eve influenced. You see how the influence went down? Nobody, even humanity, mankind, people is very ungrateful to God. God created Lucifer, and Lucifer wanted to be God. God created Adam and Eve, and they sinned against God. They did not listen. Pastor, hear this. And we are helping people today, Pastor. And when pe people reach a certain level, level what do they do? Pride. Pride come up. Like Satan. Like Satan, and they begin to influence other people. Come on, church. This is the word of God. Tell me. Leave comments if I'm not preaching good. Come on, nobody can make you do something that you do not want to do. That's why it is important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, choice. choice, pastor, yes. Listen, my belly was hurting me so much, I didn't want to, um, to come to do this. But I guess it was the will of the Lord. I come contemplated. Listen, God who created them all then he succeeded in doing as he tempted eve and got adam to join them in rebellion against god as a result of satan's role of deceiving women to join them in rebellion against god you know why satan he went for the weaker vessel <laughs> yeah pastor he went to the woman amen he didn't go to the man first satan real subtle no satan or else subtle he evil and he wicked 
Amen. He's studying you. Satan monitoring and he's studying you. He said, I'm waiting for she to make a mistake. I'm waiting for him to make a mistake. Then I go attack. Yeah, he waiting to attack. Come on. He was watching Eve. You know why? Somewhere Eve opened the door. Come on. Eve was a kingdom woman. God created Eve with his own hands. And I'm sure that they knew this. God gave them position. Listen, Revelation throwing pastor. God gave Satan position. God gave Adam and Eve position. What did they do with the position that God gave them? What, they, what did they do with the assignment that God gave them to do? They did not want it. They allowed the enemy to influence them. To detour, to avert, to destroy their destiny and their purpose. The very purpose. God created Adam and Eve for. He gave them dominion. He gave them privilege. He gave them rights. Amen. He gave them the rights to rule. Adam and Eve had position. And it seems like the people, when kingdom man and woman get into position, they do the wrong thing. They allow the devil to influence them now. They're helping God people and you know, they're coming up against God people. Yeah? Because they feel they had arrived. Satan and Adam and Eve fell into this trap. Let us not fall into this trap, people. Let us take the word of God this evening and apply it to our lives this evening. Yes, yes, Pastor. I get in fuel here, church. Relationship, yes. And influence, Pastor. We're talking about this is influence part two. Right, so influence, eh? this is a season for us to influence. We want money, we want house, we want land, we want car, we want wife, we want husband, we want children, we want grocery, we want market, we want jewelry. What do we want? How come we are our God? We want everything, but we don't want God. We want deliverance too, and we don't want God. We need God, people. When we get God, then we go get everything. Matthew 6.33 Come on, I want to encourage you to desire God. Seek for God. Seek God. And when you, when you seek God, I want to add in something here. So please, don't pass me down with no stone as I'm talking about this. People in need now is the same people that never save for the rainy day. When they make their little money, they go in my power. They go in any rum shop. They go in any club. And now they're crying and they're bawling. I want to share something with you. When me and my husband, we were young, we were, pastor was in his early 20s, I was still in my teens, I got married at the age of 15. We went and we take a loan, and we bought this piece of land here, and we was renting, and we started to build our house. You know, pastor was bad, but he had good parents, he was from a good home, so he knew even though he used to drink and take drugs and whatever, he knew that we couldn't live in this little two-room house. We had to, to go and, you know, he, he was a man then. So we, were, we are living here 30 something years now. And pastor made provision for himself when he get old now so he could rest his head when he was young. Right? Just saying. So if you need something from God, if you want, start to seek God. We cannot only want to be in the world. We want to live in the world. We want to live how we anyhow, anyhow. And we want God to bless us. It comes with a condition, right, church? So we are talking about influence. We are talking about influence. So who are you impacting? Who are you influencing? And who is impacting you? Who is influencing you? Satan is working up. Satan does not stop, you know. 24-7, he's setting up kingdom, as I said. Satan setting up kingdom in the church. He's setting up kingdom in the home to divide families and marriages. Amen. He's setting up kingdom in the neighborhood. What all the blocks have you? Amen. He's setting up kingdom in the school. And you know this last time before school closed, huh? Satan real set up the kingdom in the schools. Children were coming sex, committing sexual sins. They were smoking cigarettes. They were taking drugs in school. They were fighting in school. He was setting up his kingdom and there was nobody. You children say they are kingdom children and they're going to church. And them have the authority. God placed them there to pull on the devil kingdom. And them being influenced in the devil kingdom instead. Influence. Let us influence. Amen. Amen. So why? 
Are we being so easily influenced to do evil and wicked things? God said his face is against evil, the evil doers every day. So after Satan's fall, right? Let me go down. And I will put enmity, enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And I want to kind of conclude with this. With this pass, with this here. I want to talk about it. Just one more time about Satan setting up his kingdom in any environment against you. You may be one man, one woman, one youth, or one boy or girl, but you have all of heaven backing you up, and you have the kingdom men and women backing you up. Amen? Some people does not like to call on the kingdom man and woman. They can't call on them, you know, because from the time they call them for strength and backup, they call in their friend and their family, and they slander in you. And they're telling people your business. So they're not fit for the kingdom. Mm. Yeah, Pastor? Mm. Yeah, we have nobody to call. And everybody about their own merry way. Everybody eating and drinking. And, you know, this pandemic will be over soon and whatever. But God is speaking through the pandemic. So as I say, that we, the church, when we come out of this, we are going into a season of great power. Amen. We are going out there to impact and we are going to influence and we are going to evangelize. We don't have time for strippiness. Amen. We don't have time to play. Time for playing game in church over. It's it over. Now it's time for we to work while it is day for the night comet when no man can work. We were created to serve. We were created to be servants and this is how we will be welcomed. When we face Jesus Christ by servant, eh? who are we serving? So come on, I want to read it again. Isaiah chapter 14 talks about how Satan fell. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? And God cut him down. Amen? He cut him down and we have to cut them down too. We are going to fast and pray and cut down the devil kingdom. We are not going to allow the devil to shut us down or shut up him out or cripple we. We are going to shut down the devil and cripple the devil. We are going to disarm and dismantle the devil. We are going to destroy the works of the devil by our warfare, by our praying, our fasting, our seeking God and reading the word. Come on, we got to quote the word. We got to give Satan the word. We have to stop depending on other people to give us the word. Look, I hope each one of you have a Bible. Before Satan shut you down and shut your mouth, you shut him down and you shut his mouth. Amen. He wants to expose you, but you expose him and don't give him any, any reason to expose, to accuse you for him to go to God. God, this is your daughter. And God, she's lying. She's gossiping. She's not praying. She's not fasting. She's slandering. She's talking people business. Come on. We're not fit for the kingdom, you know. That is why God says, shut down the church. Do vex. Do vex when God says, shut it down. Shut down the world. He said he tired and he fed up and he repented in Genesis that he made man. He said that when he told Noah to build the ark, he said he repent, he make man. Why? He repent because Eve. You know what happened? You know what happened to Eve? She sat a lost. She sat a lost in the garden of Eden. She didn't love God. Adam and Eve did not love God, but God loved them. And I want you to know that God loved you. And he created you for a purpose. And he created you to influence. He created you to impact. He created you to work for him. He created you for his assignment and his purpose and his destiny. Amen. So we got to separate ourselves, church. Let us not in allow people to influence us to do the works of the flesh. Let us not allow people to influence us to go and do what God say not to do. And anything that we do that God does not approve of is sin. And God yeah. hates sin. Amen. Yeah. So if we have to hide and do something, then God does not approve that. Stop it. Amen. And most of the time when we lying, we backbiting, we gossiping, we minding people's business, we slandering, we work hating. 
We just do it in secret. We don't do it in the open. We feel God has seen. God not here, so he not seen. How God know what Lucifer was doing? Lucifer only think it in his heart as he mind. Lucifer only think it in his mind. And God done had a plan for him. God went immediately past and prepared hell for Satan. And the angels and his accomplice and the people who will serve Satan will be going to hell. And let me let you know in the sermon, the Bible speaks about when you die, you're done. Nobody could pray for you. You're going to wait for judgment to answer why you do that and why you do this. Pastor, nobody can pray for you, you know, again. Because I could read the account next time, so I want to educate you while we are alive while we have breath in our mouth and while we have strength in our body let us submit and surrender you know we always remember this that when we was in our former church we went to convention and the bishop said he said while this person was young they wasn't serving god but when they get old now and they walk in with a stick now they want to surrender what do you have to surrender now is the time to surrender to God. Not when you get old. Not when you get sick. What you have to give God when you get sick and then you want to surrender. What you surrender to God. When he want to use you. When he want you to be a vessel, a mouthpiece, hands and feet. Where he want you to go and warn them and tell them and to preach. Come on, why are you stuck? Why are you stagnant? Why are you allowing your wife or your husband or your children to stop you? And to hinder you from impacting and influencing for the yeah. kingdom of God. Come on, do not allow your husband or your wife or your children or your neighbors or your sickness or your situation or your temptation or your trial to hinder you from impacting and influencing. Come on, Satan and stopping. He not stopping. He have a mandate to go and to control Come on in the name of Jesus. Rise up, church. Come on, let's work while it is day. Amen. You could call up somebody. We are on the internet 24-7. But we're not calling anybody. We're minding people business. Yeah. On the internet. Yeah. Come on, on Facebook. Yeah. Why? We only care about ourselves. Well, I going through this and I going through that. And what? What about what somebody else is going through? And God is teaching you a lesson so you can help them experience. And God will not bless you and take care of you if you're not submitted and surrendered to him. There are conditions, church. Some people say they are kingdom man and kingdom woman and they get fed up. And they fall out of the race. Because they're serving God halfway now. One foot in, one foot out and they think God should help them. Come on in the morning. When you get up, what you do? You just go and you start your housework. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That is not praying in the morning. Let me teach you something. You have to stand in the gap for your children. You have to stand in the gap for your husband. You have to stand in the gap for your community where you live. You are responsible for your community. You are responsible for your family. You are responsible for your church. What are you doing with the assignment that God has given you? Are you dependent on other people? Well, when my back hurt me, I'll call the pastor and the wife to pray. Where is your relationship with God? Why can't you pray? Amen. Why can't you read the Bible? Yeah, why can't you call somebody and pray for them? We have to reach that place and then you will know you're growing. You have to come out the baby stage. And I want to, for all those who just came on, I welcome you. My good school friend, Brother VJ, we went to school together. And I know he's a man of God and God have a call. I want to prophesy to your brother. God call you. You have destiny in you. You have purpose in you. Go in pack. Go influence. Don't worry about anything. Let God take care about everything. He is the one. I don't know anything about you. But he is the one who will be fixing it. When you seek him, then he will fix it, sir. Come on. We don't have much time. Amen. So I want to let you know that the devil wants to control. From the beginning, he said that he wants to control God. He wants to sit in the mount. He wants to sit in God's seat. Amen. And when you see pastor and wife and leaders even people in your home in your school in your work in your environment that they are they want to control you that the devil just sets up his government in them to throw you back to shut you down to give you a deadlock when you are progressing you realize oh you just get stuck deadlock coming that is the work of the enemy that is the time we have to push we have to pray amen call up somebody who you could 
who you know is a prayer warrior, not a wishy washy person, eh? Call up somebody. Amen. We have to have each other back. Come on, Satan wants control. And let me let you know if you see that there is one person and a whole a multitude of people is with them, they have a group of people, and this one person controlling them, that is the devil set up his kingdom there to mash up and to break up. Amen. So, because Satan did the same thing, he tried to do the same thing. Satan was able to influence angels who God made and influence Adam and Eve into rebelling against God. And they lose their purpose and their destiny. Amen? So, God will give us purpose. He will give us destiny. We have to do the right thing. Eh? When we get saved and become God set to use us now, we have to keep on the right path. We have, we cannot. Yes, we have to be humble as pastor. Say, thank you, pastor. Why I want to preach this message. I want to show you why the church is mashing up. Because Satan is sitting inside the man and woman of God and people to control them. To mash up and to break up, to shut down. Amen. To detour, to bring deadlock, to bring no progress. Come on, the churches. The churches, we're talking about the churches first. So we have to pray. Sometimes I wasn't it myself. We, I reach a place that we pray so much and we couldn't, I alone, couldn't intercede for that, that we had to move on and we had to move out. Amen? So when you see these kind of things happening, get out. Find somewhere where you could work for God, where you could influence, where you could impact, where you could build the kingdom. We have a kingdom assignment. We are Nehemiahs. We have to build the kingdom. But instead, kingdom man and woman, they're pulling down the kingdom. They're pulling down. They're not building. We're not seeing the kingdom expanding. Come on. We want to see the kingdom of God expanding. Hey, Koromo, so Koromo, Seke, why isn't pastor, why isn't the kingdom of God expanding? Because the devil is sitting inside. Listen, let's go over again to Ezekiel one more time, chapter, chapter 28. Let's go there. The king of Tyre, he was referred to as Lucifer because he think the same thoughts Lucifer think that he higher than God. Come on, church. He said in, in, in Tyre, the referral is that the devil was sitting inside the king of Tyre. Because he said he wanted to be above God. Listen. Ezekiel 28. Let's go over there. Am I helping you? I hope I'm helping you. Hallelujah. 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 28. The word of the Lord came. And this is Ezekiel chapter 28. Mark it or write it down. You go and study it for yourself. Listen. This is what is happening. Even Satan sits in husbands. And Satan sits in wives. Satan sits in children. Satan sits in your co-workers, in your bosses, in your supervisors. Satan sits in your neighbors. Right? This is it. Here where he say, listen. I want to read it over one more time. It say here, this is Ezekiel chapter 14 says that I just want to get it here. Isaiah 14 is the other passage that teaches us about the fall of Satan. Listen, Satan became God's opponent, his adversary, who set out to dethrone God and obstruct Pastor his plan for history. I didn't read that one. Wow. Is it sounding familiar? Is familiar? Is someone doing this to you, trying to dethrone you? Listen, Satan became God's opponent. Do you have an opponent? You know Satan is in that person, and you need to start to do what you and pull down the devil kingdom from that person. Huh? You have the dominion. Satan became God's opponent, his adversary, who set out to dethrone God and obstruct his plan for history and. Is someone obstructing the plan of God for your life? Oh, come on. We know as he work up the enemy. Do not allow the enemy to work through people. 
to block God's plan for you. You, this is the time now. You have to start to pray and to seek God. Listen, the word of the Lord came again unto me saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre. This is the word of God that came to Ezekiel for the prince of Tyre. Thus saith the Lord God. This is the word that God gave Ezekiel for this king. Because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am God. And Satan was in the king of Tyre because this is the same thing that God, that Satan said to God. Amen. About God. That he want to sit in God's place. Someone wants to sit in your place? If someone wants to take your place and sit in your place, then that is the word, then Satan is in them, operating in them and active in them. And you have, it's happening to me now, eh? I've been attacked. I made this sermon. This is influence part two. I made this sermon through the attacks upon my life when God started to open my eyes and show me that Satan is setting up his government in one person. That means Satan, this one person, influencing, contaminating, and putting people to do bad things say, Come on. Sometimes, most of the times, people want to sit in your place. Satan wanted to sit in the seat of God. The king of Tyre wanted to sit in the seat of God. But God had a judgment and there is a consequence of that. And people don't realize, brothers and sisters, church, kingdom man and woman, people don't realize that when you put in a call to heaven and when you start to pray and when you start to fast, I'm sorry for them. You'll begin to dismantle, disarm, destroy, avert about everything that they are doing and we need to do. Sometimes we don't have the courage. Sometimes I don't have the strength to do it. But I rise up. Amen. I get my strength in prayer and in fasting and reading the word of God. I want to encourage you. If you are not where you used to be, I want to encourage you. To come back to that place because God has a plan and he has a purpose for you. You are his mouthpiece. And sometimes we get setbacks. The devil always attacking us with setbacks. Eh? So behold. Okay, pastor bringing some references. He's really helping me and giving me fuel. He say here. We're talking about Satan and his pride and conceit. The thief Satan considers himself to be the equal of the most high God, aiming to steal his throne and defraud his kingdom. The throne, yeah. yeah, the truth. So people feel that they can steal our position, they can steal what God has for us and defraud us. Listen, Pastor wants me to read Lord. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God. So people, you yeah, see, listen, listen, the devil will go in. Yes, Pastor. Before. You have to come at the side of me. Yeah, mm -hmm. once any purpose I go. Pastor, put on a jersey yeah. and come here. Listen, I hope I'm Before. really encouraging you. I want to encourage you all to come yeah, and work before. for the kingdom of God. Do something for Before. God. Before. Stop. Stop staying in the background now. Now it's not time to play. Now it's time to work. Listen, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God. So your, your own people will oppose you, eh? your wife, your husband, your children, your neighbors, your friends, your family, your co-workers, or whoever, your schoolmates. So when you see this happening, you know that is the work of the enemy. And then they are opposing who you are in God and they're coming up against the God in you. Amen. They don't want you to fulfill God's purpose. Or is worship so that he sets up him in God's temple and proclaiming himself to be God. They talk about in God's temple again. Satan is in the church. Pastor, and I read it. I read it where in um, Isaiah chapter 14, 13 B say he want to be the head in the congregation. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the... Ah, look at here, Pastor, the congregation. Mm -hmm. So wherever there is a congregation, Satan wants to sit in the leader there. To control. For you have said in your heart. Okay that's it. Let me go lower down. The devil. Took him up on an exceeding high mountain. And. Showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And their glory. 
And he said to him, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. You know, um, Pastor, show me the scripture. This is some um, Matthew 4, 8 to 9. I don't know if anybody here ever realized. When pastors, right, they start up humble, humble like me and my husband. I'm simple. I do not overdress. I love my makeup. Pastor, I love my little yeah, earring, my chain. But we see now kingdom woman, pastor, they hair white, the whole head red. They um, the makeup every time they come on Facebook. Wow. You know, be simple. Put on your little face powder, your lipstick, and look nice. Look, I just went and refreshed myself. Things are the world. This detour. Yeah, our destiny. I want to finish. Read this here. So I want to let you know that you have dominion. You have authority. King David said in Psalm 91, We will tread upon the land and the other, the young land and the dragon. We will trample them under our feet. Amen. So after Satan fall into sin, he now sets out to expand his influence by tempting the newly created Adam and Eve to join his rebellion against God. And people who are in rebellion towards God, and it's looking like if they're serving God, they get other people to join them in the rebellion against God. But they camouflage and it's looking like if they're for God. It's looking like if they're serving God. Because there's a deacon, there's the elder, they're worshipping and they're having a ritual, you know, a religious. You know, without the Holy Spirit. I worship a little sermon, a little this and that, no miracle, no sign, no wonders in the church again. You know, and they feel comfortable and they feel that is church. Well, let me blow your mind, that is not church, eh? That is not church. Another day we're going to deal with that. As a result of Satan's role of deceiving the woman into joining his revolt against God, the Lord cursed the serpent and the woman as follows. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. Like Genesis 3.15. The outworking of this great conflict between the serpent seed and the seed of the woman commences. So, I don't want to go um, more with this sermon of influence. I want to stop there. I want to pray now. I want to pray. Um, you know what hurts my heart? When I see good men and good women who are backslidden or they become cool. I want them to be like me. I want them to be on fire like me. I want them to be serving God. Please do something for God. Where you are, in your comfortable place, that is not where God wants you. You know, I want all my friends, all my family, you know, who, who is a born again Christian, who was going through the process, who went through the process, and you're ready? Come and join with us, and we're going to go out there, and we're going to Preach the word in the highway. Are we going to preach the word in the Bible? Or else find somewhere where you can be comfortable. You know, sometimes in churches, they ha just have one set of people who are doing one set of things. And they're not moving forward. They're not deadlock and they have no progress on the things that church. And they don't want to give anybody else a chance. We've been there. We've done that. So you feel now, because you can operate in that atmosphere, that there is no more atmosphere. God doesn't work like that. And that is not rebellion. Because if the man and woman of God is not allowing you, your gifting and your calling, then they will have to answer to the Almighty God. We had to do it, church. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah. Oh, Karamande Ramando Ramanda, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every kingdom man and every kingdom woman who is locked on, that purpose, your purpose will be activated in their lives, God. Brother Dinesh, oh God. Oh, Kiramando, Romo, Sokondo, everyone, every man, every woman, God, that you will activate your purpose and your plan for these people, these precious people. Father, and wherever the devil is building his government, Lord, in and his kingdom in their home, 
in their workplace, in the village, in the school board. You will dismantle it in the name of Jesus, Lord. You will give them that dunamis power, empower them with power, Lord. Give them that mantle of warfare, intercession, pray. Father, right now, touch and let healing begin to flow. Let deliverance begin to flow. Whoever is at the sound of my voice, let deliverance begin to flow. Touch. Father, you touch. You speak to every person. I ask you to speak to every person, O oh God, on this live, Lord, and who will be listening, O oh God. I break every deadlock spirit in the name of Jesus against your marriage, against your purpose, against your destiny, against your finance, against your relationship. E Coromondo, we break the deadlock, no progress spirit in the name of Jesus. And we'll release the mantle of ongoing success, ongoing progress in your marriage, in your health, in your finance, in your business, in your church, in your environment, your neighborhood, your school. Progress. E. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, have your way. We thank you that I have delivered the word and your word has gone forth, Lord. Thanking your Lord for victory over victory that no more time should intervene in the answer of my prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus this evening, oh God, we worship you, God. We worship you, God, that the battle is not theirs. Someone there, the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. Father, we pray for deliverance of people who are in addiction, Lord. Oh, and bad habit and bad vices this evening. Oh, God, touch, we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit today upon your people. Karamando, Ramasi, Kando, Robo, Sekendo, Robo, Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch this evening. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Pastor, let's sing one song. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you and God bless you and I want to thank you for listening this evening. I want to thank you for watching. I want to prophesy over your life that the purpose of God will be activated in your life, that the kingdom of God will manifest in your life. Father, let your kingdom come in every Facebook viewer life. And let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that you will really experience this anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon your people. A fire. Oh, Father, let your fire. All those who need a healing in their body, Lord. All those who need a word this evening, oh God. All those who need you, oh Jesus, your people need you. Father, we break the spirit of depression, oppression, frustration, and we cast it out joy, joy and gladness, Lord. Joy, joy, oh, go rejoice in church. Come on, come on, go rejoice. And the devil is a liar. He wants you to think that you have to be depressed and oppressed, but you have a hope. God is on your side. He will help you. Come on, just cry out, just call out. And let me tell you something. All the people who are coming up against you, I pray, Father, people who are coming up against people on this life, that you will show them they are not fighting against them, but against you. And you will fight for them. You will dismantle the kingdom of Satan through humans against these people, Lord. We thank you for victory over victory. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. This is a God will provide ministries. My husband is a head pastor. The senior pastor, I am the co-pastor. We, Our church is located in Avocat. Amen. So if you need prayer and counseling, you do not have to come to my church. 
You could be from any other denomination. I don't want you to come to my church if you belong somewhere. But if you need a counseling and you need a prayer and you need a deliverance, you can come. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed night and a blessed week. Hallelujah.